Let's begin. I'm Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. Every single day I come at you with two questions to help you as you continue to prep for your CISSP exam. Hopefully I'm helping you get closer and closer and closer to it. Let's go ahead and do the question number one. You know, I'm not a database guy from a career perspective. Um, I know what I know about databases from just a few projects that I've been involved in and then you know personal use stuff and then of course what I need to know in order to be able to talk about things from a certification perspective but one of the things that's always just been profoundly absurd to me is the terminology that we use in the database world um, and I'm sure there's very good reasons for it but we have the common everyday vernacular that people go in and make use of and then we have all of the seemingly or comparatively confusing terminology of databases now I know that database people are going to hate on me for saying that but you go talk to regular everyday people even IT people they don't use all these fancy words to go in and talk about their databases. Having said that, you as a CISSP candidate are not free from needing to know all the fancy words that we use for everyday things in databases. So my question to you today is which of the following best describes the domains of a relation in a relational database? Go ahead and look at those answer choices. Click on pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play and we can break it down. Okay, first answer is the right answer. A name set for all the possible values of an attribute. Um, all of a certain type or all of the same type. So the possible values that you could have uh, for a particular column for an attribute um, is what the domain of the relation is. So it's a seemingly confusing way of describing what the possible values are for an individual column. Um, but that's what that's for. Other things here, terminology, we definitely want to make sure that you know. It says all of the tuples in a relation. A tuple is analogous to a row. So how many rows do you have in your table? A relation is a table. So relation equals table, tuple equals row, and attribute equals column. So which is what the next answer choice is. So all the individual attributes of a relation are all the columns in a table is what that means. And uh, for this question, the cardinality of a relation uh, simply means how many rows there are in a table and then the degree of uh, the degree of attributes in a relation is the number of columns that you have in a particular table. So super fancy words to go in and describe things that most of us know from just kind of day-to-day -day interaction with even things as basic as like Microsoft Excel. We all kind of know what rows and columns and cells and things like that are. Uh, that everyday j um, jargon that we're going to make use of is made even more confusing by the fancy database terminology that you're going to want to make sure that you know from a CISSP exam perspective. All right, let's do question number two. Uh, both IP version 4 and IP version 6 operate at layer 3 of the OSI model. My question for you is, is given this list of answer choices, which of them is not in an IP version 4 header? Click on pause if you need to, give that some thought, and then when you think you got the right answer, click on play and we can break it down. All right, first answer choice, time to live. Absolutely, time to live is a field in an IP version 4 header. It is not a field in an IP version 6 header. Uh, protocol ID, protocol ID is absolutely a field in an IP version 4 header. It does not exist in an IP version 6 header. So um, that's not the right answer either. Flow label. Flow label is a field in an IP version 6 header. It does not exist in the IP version 4 header. So ding, 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 that's the right answer for this particular question. All right, the version field. The version field exists in both the IP version 4 header and the IP version 6 header. It identifies the version of IP that you're using. The source IP address exists in both fields. In this context, it's trivial that in IP version 4, the source IP address is 32 bits in length, whereas in IP version 6, it is 128 bits in length. And then the last two answer choices, there's a fragment offset and a checksum. The fragment offset exists in an IP version 4 header, and the checksum exists in an IP version 4 header. Neither of those fields, however, exist in an IP version 6 header. Uh, the, the fragment offset doesn't exist in an IP version 6 header because intermediate routers aren't allowed to uh, do fragmentation, and any of that stuff would actually be uh, packaged up somewhere else in an extension header. And the checksum value, um, I did a question not too long ago where the checksum value is simply something that the IP version 6 developers kicked to the curb because they felt like there was an adequate number of checksums built into other protocols and communication pathways 
um, as well as the increased uh, reliability of our communication pathways that just having yet another checksum in the IP header, which only checks the header itself, doesn't actually check the integrity of your information, just wasn't necessary for a modern implementation of the internet protocol, which is with IP version 6. So yes, there's a checksum field in IP version 4 headers. No, there is not a checksum value in an IP version 6 header. So to go back to the actual answer, just to summarize all of this information I'm throwing at you, the flow label field does not exist in an IP version 4 header, but it does exist in an IP version 6 header. So we were looking for which of these options does not exist in IP version 4, and the answer to that question is flow label. All right, one, two, more questions down. Hope you dug them. Hope they help you as you continue your prep. Uh, let me know how things are going. I'd be totally interested to hear that your success stories as far as the exam is concerned. So let me know that down in the comments. And also subscribe if you're not quite done with that exam yet and you need to get more of these questions every single day because I'll be back tomorrow.